High End Radio, nigga. On the Sickness Network. High End Radio, we on the air. Who am I chopping it up with? Yo, yo, what it do? It's your boy Lil Nico coming at you live and direct, dig. What's happening with young Nico? How you doing, player? I'm good, man. I'm excited. You know, we got the show on Lifetime right now, the rap game. I've been in the studio knocking some tracks out. I'm just working, man. I feel good. That's what's up, man. I'm I'm, I'm going to get right to it, man. First of all, we sitting back. Jermaine Dupree has this new show. He introduces all the artists. Boom, here comes little Nico out of San Diego, California. So right now, you basically are the nationwide ambassador for the town. That should make you feel good. Oh, yeah, of course. You know, I, I love putting on for my city, man. San Diego doesn't get the, the recognition and shine that it should, so I'm forever going to to the soil, you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly, and that's what's up, man. So tell me, how did the process even come about, man? Because, see, a lot of people ain't aware of your history, so go ahead and take a couple uh, minutes, man, and let the, let the people, let the listeners check your oil. Oh, man. So, I mean, as far as the show, it wasn't like an audition uh, situation. They reached out to me. Um, you know, they saw the following that I already had on, you know, YouTube and social media types and things like that. But, you know, when I first hit the scene, I was about 10 years old. I, I, that's when I start, signed my first deal at Def Jam, at the Ocadian song with DJ Khaled, Television Love. And now, you know, I'm older. I learned a lot more. You know, the situation at Def Jam didn't go as planned, but it was a learning experience for me. And, um, you know, we, we on the bigger and better things. Now that I am older, more mature, and uh, the growth, I think, is definitely going to show in the new music. No doubt, no doubt. That's what's up. So, in your new music, matter of fact, let's go back a little bit. Your situation at Def Jam. See, you were young when you got your deal. Fortunately, Moms is right there to make sure no mistakes are made. True? Right. Okay. Manager, yeah. Right. So, my thing is this. Um, for our listeners who think that it's just, I'm immediately going to buy the million dollar house because I'm signed to Def Jam, could you shed a little right. light on that situation? Yeah, man, this, this this industry isn't what a lot of people on the outside looking at really think that it is. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot more that goes into it before the checks really even start winning like that. So as soon as you, you know, hit, hit your, you know, sign your deal or whatever, that's not when necessarily you reach the big break. That's when the hard work really begins. You know what I mean? You've worked so hard to get to that point now. you got to really be in 100%, 150% grind mode. And, um, you know, not not every deal is necessarily a, a million-dollar deal or, you know, buku bucks coming in. But, um, you know, you got to work your way up to that point. And um, it's just, you know, a, a lot of this stuff just, it's, it's, it's kind of smoke and mirrors, man. It's not everything that it seems to be or, or appears to be. Okay. Now, um, after the show or during the show, I'm sure you're recording new music. Are you looking for another major deal, or do you plan on staying independent with it? I'm staying on. Uh, I'm, I'm planned on, um, you know, staying independent right now. Um, you know, hopefully I get this, you know, so so death deal. That might be pretty dope, but... Um, I'm I'm not really too focused on anything else right now. I'm just I'm just working. That's what's up. Now, Nico done dropped some game on y'all for y'all that are listening. Please pay attention because everything that glitters ain't gold. Hard work perseveres everything. So for sure. let's get into the rap game. I have my favorites for a whole bunch of different reasons. You're automatically our favorite. You from the town. So, boom, you won as far as we concerned. How <laughs> how however, um what is what what is what is the day-to-day -day situation like? I mean, are y'all of course it's a competition. Are y'all genuinely friends? Are y'all talking about collaborating after the show or is it just, you know, I'm out for me to win this 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 thing. Simple as that. Well, you know, uh we we all living under one roof as it is right now, you know, the show and everything going on. Um, you know, we cool, you know, it's some people that um just kinda stay to themselves, they're a little more focused than others, so it kinda comes uh, across as a little standoffish maybe. But um, you know, we just kinda in our zone, so I think everybody is cordial, everybody is cool with each other. 
dope. That's real. That's really dope. I really, you know, the show is is really cool for a lot of different reasons. Not only is he exposing a whole new little generation of new hip hop artists, but it really does give a lot of people insight of the rap game. And for them to reach out to you is is big in right. itself. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's crazy because I'm sure a lot of people aren't even aware of the fact that. You know, you've been grinding for a quite a long time, and I'm curious yeah. to know who are some of your influences in the hip hop game from San Diego. From San Diego, I definitely have to go with Mitch. That's off top. Um, you know, I listen to a little bit of Oso. Um, I, I listen to I listen to different genres of music. You know, I have different different um, you know, a little bit of samples that may not necessarily come from the genre of hip hop in itself, but just having, you know, a, a different ear for music and, you know, just kind of being different from the in crowd, you know, jail felony. Um, it's a lot of different artists that I, I listened to growing up and I still listen to today and um, just different, different melodies, different flows that really have impacted what I got going on right now. Will, will, will any San Diego artists be showing up on your next project? Oh, man. Definitely. Well, I, I just did a song just in the studio with Mitch not too long ago. That's we had a couple more songs coming, so, um, you know, it's definitely going to be something big for the town. That's what's up. So, that's as far as we're going to speak as far as the town. Who are some of your major hip-hop influences? Because the very first show, I believe the premiere, when you guys had to perform in front of everybody... I'm sure moms told you, or they told you beforehand, you were in the presence of pop greatness. Yeah. So who are some? So who are some of your major hip hop influences? Um, Nas, Jay Z, A Tribe Called Quest, um, Pop definitely. Um, let me see who else. Wu, the whole Wu Tang, all ten thousand of them. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I listen to a lot of, you know, the East Coast, rap, West Coast, N.W.A., Q, um, Dre, Kendrick, um, you know, just, just, just name a few. It's funny because everybody that you named is lyrical. Yeah. And, again, going back to the show, I'm watching the show. Some are more lyrical than others, and you happen to be one of the ones that, you know, Happen to be lyrical, so yeah, hats off to that man. That's dope. That's dope. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Indeed. So, hip hop today. What does it need? What does it need more of, and what does it need less of? Well, hip hop. Hip hop is a culture. I think a lot is going on now. Is kind of rap music, and even rap music has changed. But that that like what's going on right now is going to cause me to compromise my style to try to appeal to what's going on right now. I'm gonna always stay true to myself. But, you know, it's just the the lack of lyrical content and some of the excessive use of auto-tune. It's, it's a lot of different things that I'm personally not a, a big fan of that's going on now. And um, the game has definitely changed, man. My generation and generations before me, because I listen to music that's before my time, way before my time, you know, a decade plus before my time. So um, it, it definitely changed to me. Definitely changed. The style has changed. People can talk about absolutely anything and, and then near go platinum or go platinum. Like, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's actually, in, in, in some senses, it's kind of sad. Where Kendrick set the bar at, he's brought it back to lyrics. Yeah, definitely. That's why I respect, you know, Kendrick's and, and Schoolboy Q's and, you know, J. Cole so much. And even Fabulous still doing his thing because they bring in back that that lyrical content back to the game that's been needed for a very long time now. Right. That's what's up. Let me switch reels real quick. Jermaine. High-end radio, nigga. On the Sickness Network. Nah, he, he probably even harder in real life than it, it looks on uh, TV. You know, I think he just really sees the potential in us and how far we can really go. But, you know, if it's if it's simple things like myself, the first couple of weeks not really paying attention like I should have and he was hard on me, it's because he can see where I can really go with this, but... If I'm not listening like I should, then you know it's it's just it's, it's not going it's not going to happen. So it's just some things I just kind of overthinking, or you know some things I wasn't really fully putting into perspective like I should have been. And um, you know that goes for 
everybody. You know, he, we all have talent. We all on the show for a reason. And I think he just he, he sees what we can be. But you don't get upset or frustrated when that person is kind of not helping their own situation. Right. Get to what it's going to do. Right. You know, it's it's not easy to be relevant in this industry for as long as he has. And, um, you know, the accolade he's accomplished and the things that he's even taught me, you know, being on this show is is great. And it's, it's a blessing. This platform has never been done before. So I definitely take it and consider it, execute and apply it to my craft. That's what's up, man. You really could you really should have crushed the tour uh, uh, challenge, though. I can't front. I ain't even gonna front when 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 your turn came up. I said the homie getting ready. The little homie about to rip this. You still did, but you know, right. And to keep it all the way one hundred, it was kind of unfair because teaching them from the A, ain't they? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So boom, while the show's going on, you won't be making any. You won't be doing any performances or anything, will you? No, um, not while the show is on. I don't think. Uh, I, I made me for some performances actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did um did Redan High School in Atlanta. We did uh what other show did we do? I think we we it, it, it's it's a couple performances in the show. Um, so yeah, definitely be on the lookout for that. You know, I had to shut the stage down a couple times. Okay, okay. Well, we're gonna speak something into existence before we get up out of here. Once you are signed to So So Deaf. What's right. what's the plan after that? Oh man, Just keep working, keep grinding. More shows, more music, staying in the studio even longer. Um, just staying consistent and perfecting my craft, man. The only way is up. How are you managing all the grind, the show, your music career, and school at the same damn time? <laughs> well, you know, school. I, I mean, school in this industry definitely goes hand in hand. I have to have a certain GPA to have a work permit and do shows and go out of town like I need to to work. So, um, you know, in this industry, in any industry, you can only make so much money or do so many things as a hip-hop artist. That's why so many people like Kanye West and Jay-Z and Diddy have ventured off, ventured off to business things, and I want to go to college and major in business, but I got to graduate to make that happen. So um, you definitely have to balance it out, man. Education is important. Absolutely, absolutely. That's big. Um, okay, okay. Well, here's a big thing that we do on High End Radio, man. Before we go, uh, I wanted to know, is it possible that you could bless our listeners with a hot 16? Before I had to deal, I was working every day. In and up the state, back and forth to L.A. Cut to the West Coast, your girl gave me great. Shop the master of a new age, like where's Dr. Dre? It's all pink. Rockin' the Cuban link, 10,000 for the mink, what you think? I need the millions, cause I'm one in a million, really, that's where the tink. He said his mixtape fire, nobody click the link. Homie, you can't handle it, hot just like the candle lit. Bread on top and on the bottom like a candle did. Your career ain't established yet, I think you need better management. Competition gone fishing, ooh, they call it hell of it. Look, I'm on my song. So how your jewelry on me shine when the lights start? Mm. You taking pictures, so I'm posing for the night car. I watch the snake all the time. Python, looking at my left and get smacked with my right palm. Taylor Swift and Kanye, they should have left the mic gone. Gone. Good looking. But you got some punchlines. I can't wait to rewind. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even going to print. So listen, man, let everybody know where they can find you at. They can find your music. Any shout outs? The floor is yours. Oh, man. Twitter, Instagram, everything is Lil Nico, L I L N I Q O. Oh, oh, shout out my manager, you know, you know, you know. Yeah, word of my brother Murdoch.